Washington just lost in the national championship, so today I'll be taking them over and playing until they can actually win a title. However, this isn't going to be easy because the Huskies have been thrown into the Big Ten and almost all of their best players are now gone. The only standouts include Mississippi State transfer Will Rogers and halfback Dylan Johnson who's in 94 overall, but they're going to graduate after this first year and I highly doubt that we'll win it all this season. That's why it's key that we do a great job in recruiting because there's quite a few team needs that we have to fill and by the high overalls on our board you can tell that I'm using Feng's realistic recruiting mods. Some of our targets include 94 speed Ryan Artis, who's a four star from Arizona I'd love to land, but he doesn't come close to touching athlete Corey Julius, who's a 94 overall, and I'm gonna assume that he plays on the defensive line, but he'll be our main target with the rest of these other guys just being some other options. Our schedule for this first year starts out really easy, but then it gets difficult and we're gonna end the year on the road at our rivals, and I'd love to take them down because that'd knock off one of today's six video challenges, where if we fail any of these objectives, I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter. I'm also only going to give myself four years to win it all with Washington, and even though we're projected to be the 11th best team, there's still three teams that are supposed to be better than us in the Big Ten. Now, unlike some of my other rebuilds, I will be hopping into every single game, so you're going to get very used to seeing Husky Stadium. I'm a little shocked at how competitive it's been as Eastern Michigan is literally beating us, but in the fourth quarter, Will Rogers was able to tie it up, and this Huskies defense just needs to hold them on third and 16, which we do. It should not have taken this long to get things flowing, but now they're going a lot better. And I'm not even worried about that drop because it's man-to-man -man coverage where Jeremy Bernard was able to get open. I'm expecting Dylan Johnson to rush this one in, but Eastern Michigan is driving down the field on our defense. It would have been nice to have a sack there, and we're not going to bring down their quarterback. He is somehow still going against us, so I'm sure you all can see why I'm struggling to get them off of the field. And after spiking the ball, it is third and goal where I can't keep up with all those slants. They took it to the flat. We're going to hold them, and I'm taking a timeout because I wanted to set up good defense for this fourth and goal where it's a halfback screen, and we are all over it. We're going to start off the Washington rebuild with a win, and it should have been a blowout, but all that matters is we got the right result, especially since we're struggling to get a lead on any of the recruits that we really won. I'm not sure how long we're going to last inside the top 10, but we should at least take down Eastern Washington, especially since they're an FCS school. And I don't know what's up with this Washington team, but we're going to hit Jeremiah Hunter, the transfer that just came in from Cal for the year, because in order to seal what should not be a tight one, we have to reach the end zone with Dylan Johnson, and we do. Evidently, far too many players left after they made their championship run, but at least we're able to hold on. There's a pick, and we also get a bye week to regroup before our schedule gets incredibly brutal. During that time, we were able to bring in these three commits, which really helps us, but my main focus is still these top three players, and at least we have a lead on Ryan Artis, but for all of them, we're scheduling them for a visit against number 17 Oregon, and I'm not looking forward to our prior two matchups on the road at these top two teams. There's only so much we can do, and Penn State's been elite so far, which means my expectations are not very high, but maybe we can pull off the upset in front of the whiteout crowd, and I don't care that we're really closely ranked it would definitely be an upset if we pulled it off. That was a great pitch over to Jeremy Bernard who has one guy to beat and I don't think he's going to, but still a very solid ending to the first quarter. And we know that Will Rogers can sling it, so it's no question that he's going to have somebody open on third down, but that drop is going to force us to settle for a field goal instead. And I'm pretty sure we haven't stopped Penn State's offense yet. We're going to try and get on the board to end the first half, but that is much easier said than done. We have about 13 seconds and that ball is going to be dropped. So we're going to see if the corner route could potentially get open and I didn't hit the right button, but it's going to be okay. Jeremy Bernard, our best wide receiver, was able to reel it in, but we simply have not been able to keep up with the Nittany Lions. At least we're going to pick up this fourth and four that we had to go for, and Hunter transferring as a senior has been big for the program, at least for this game, but our defense has to get them off the field, and maybe we can do that here. It is third and seven, but Drew Aller finds Wallace, and in the end, we simply couldn't keep up, but at least we showed a little resistance, and this was our welcome to the Big Ten, which I'm not enjoying. Next up is USC, who's coming off of a loss at Minnesota, but they're still a much higher overall, and for whatever reason, they still have Caleb Williams, which reminds me that we have to worry about our future at quarterback, and freshman Demarius Davis is probably our best option, but I've also started to recruit Justin Woodring because we need a quarterback that can pass for over 4,000 yards, and since he has 59 speed, I know he can sling the rock. For now, we're just going to focus on this one though, and beating USC would really help us, but with a minute and a half left, we find ourselves trailing by 11 against the Trojans, and the only reason we're not out of it yet is because we still have three timeouts left. That's going to go over to Hunter who gets us inside the 10 and I'll be looking back in Jeremiah Hunter's direction on this one where the pass is going to get deflected at the line. Second and goal now. This will be a tight window but it's going to work and let's see if Dylan Johnson can punch it in for us which he can't. However for some reason they've given us credit for it and now they're doing an official review as he clearly didn't get close. If we can manage to get the ball back we're going to have to score a touchdown to beat the Trojans and they did recover the onside kick but not all hope is lost because we could still stop the run three times and I'm pretty sure like half of this roster that they're using transfer
transferred out, how did Lloyd just get the first down on us? Well, that's already our second loss of the year, and Caleb Williams needs to graduate, but at least we know for a fact that Bo Nix has, and that's crucial with all of these recruits visiting, where I'd love to throw for at least 250 yards, so we'll see if Will Rogers is able to help us do that. And on our first drive, I'm gonna hit him with a little bit of play action, then roll out, take the wheel route over on that side of the field, which is brought in by our tight end. So this is our chance to have our best start of the season, and I just fit it into that very tight window where he dropped it. I need to be focused on feeding Dylan Johnson more, but we have a pass-heavy offense, which makes that hard. And on third and goal, we're just gonna go for the slant over the middle, but it's short, so I'm gonna let our star halfback try and help us punch it in, which he does. It was risky to go for it on fourth down, but it's gonna pay off, because by the end of the third quarter, we've been able to maintain our lead, but it's about to change. The Ducks have gotten it down to our two-yard line, and I'm run committing on second and goal, where we should have gotten in in time, but they've pitched it to the outside, and that's a tutty. Fortunately, we've been working our butts off to give a good response back to Oregon, and the sun is really hitting that left side of the field where we're taking our corner route over to Hunter and he's going to get to the 10. Just a minute left on the clock now. Will Rogers is rushing and he's going to get close to the end zone, but I wanted to take a little bit more time off the clock before eventually getting in. All we have to do is make sure that we don't give up anything stupid, which shouldn't be that difficult. And this is the final play of the game where Novasad is going to have a shot at the end zone. We couldn't get in pressure. That is going to be intercepted though, and please do not count this as a safety. Well, we're all good and that's going to be a big win over Oregon, especially since Will Rogers threw for over 250 yards because we've been able to pick up a lot of other commits like athlete John Bean who's going to play corner and then wide receiver Ron Artist but we did lose out on Jalen Ford and Ryan Artist isn't an 88 plus recruit so that challenge isn't knocked off but we could still get that with Cornelius Foster or Corey Julius and time will tell what happens there but we could still win our division in the Big Ten but in order to do so we have to beat the Buckeyes on the road and let's just say that didn't happen. I choked a 28 point lead in the second half so I don't want to talk about it and it's kind of hard for me to believe that we're still ranked but that's what happens when you're coming off a national championship appearance and if we want any shot of making the playoffs we have to win this game well if you take a look at the score you'd be able to tell it's been a defensive battle but we do have a lead going into the fourth and let's see what will rogers can do on second and ten here where we're going with the deep post over to boston and denzel's only a sophomore so we're gonna have him for a while simming the extra point did not help us out though as it was missed and ucla has driven all the way down the field on us but now it's third and goal we'll see what they do they had just a wide receiver screen over on that side of the field that they didn't take and we're getting the sack. It's hard to believe they're settling for a field goal, but that's made it very easy for us to win as one first down will seal it and Dylan Johnson gets it. That win makes our playoff hopes stay alive, and there's only a few of these last five matchups that really concern me. Believe it or not, Nebraska on the road is not one of those, because so far this season they're three and four, and Will Rogers has had a pretty good performance against them. He's going to the end zone on this play, but they clamped us up, so we're gonna have to settle for a field goal, and they're still within two possessions. It's third and 12 though, and we will see if they can get this ball out in time. They're gonna get at least eight, but as long as we hold them on fourth and three, we will seal our win, and I could not use her over the middle there. Just a few plays later, they'd score a touchdown, so we're getting the ball back with a couple minutes left in the game, but I trust in our ability to close it out, and why is Cameron Davis taking this handoff? Apparently, Dylan Johnson sprained his elbow on our last drive, so we won't have our best player for the next few weeks, and that's not good. I'm confident in our ability to seal this game, which we're gonna do on this play, but not having Dylan Johnson could be a problem, and I hope we don't miss him against Iowa, but we probably will, and there's still a chance we can make the Big Ten championship. All it takes is USC losing one more time, so we're gonna root for that and hopefully win out. I don't think this game could have gotten off to any better of a start, because knowing how Iowa's offense works, sometimes all it takes to beat them is scoring seven points, and we're literally gonna have double more than what we need, as Denzel Boston catches his second touchdown of the day, so it is no surprise that we have a lead still in the fourth quarter, and all we have to do is stop the Hawkeyes one last time, which we're going to do so with this interception. That is a beautiful read from Powell, and I think he's gonna take this one back to the crib. The Hawkeyes mascot doesn't look too happy, and I told you all, all we needed to beat them was seven points. Will Rogers had a decent game too, and as a result, we landed these four recruits, which are probably just depth pieces, but I'll take it because we're still in tight battles for all of these guys, and that includes our top two prospects. That result also put us back in the playoff picture, but Minnesota's not going to be easy because they're also ranked and they took down USC earlier on, so I was nervous, and it was for the right reasons as they've put up a great fight, but if we could hold them on third and 12, I wouldn't feel as worried about it, and that's a good sack. They're obviously still going to get a field goal, but their lead is only four points. And let's see if this deep post route to Denzel Boston gets open on this play. I want to hit the sophomore receiver and he comes over to the football. So he is going to be exciting to continue to have on this roster. And let's hit Jeremy Bernard for 20. There's only about two minutes left and we need to be careful not to take a sack. If we can hit this throw on the run to Jeremiah Hunter, that would be beautiful. And Minnesota's in danger as we are about to reach the end zone. But I've also been taking some time off the clock beforehand and I should have hit that route, but I didn't want to take it. Will Rogers trying to make a play. And I hope my fear of an interception doesn't come back 
back to bite us. In the Grand Rapids series, that would have been a pick with the sliders I've been playing on, so I just didn't take it. And it all comes down to fourth and goal, where I'm going to put Denzel Boston on a slant just in case the halfback screen's not open, but we're going to have to take this and hope that Davis can put in the work and he can't. I just choked that ending versus Minnesota, and I am not happy about it. All of Washington's losses have been good ones, so in order to keep that streak alive, we have to beat Wisconsin. But with two and a half minutes left, they have a seven point lead on us, which is concerning. Dylan Johnson is back, so halfback screen should work a little bit better. We've gotten some decent blocks over there. He's going to do a spin move to get out, and that is a beautiful move. Dylan Johnson to the end zone. Now the key to success is just getting them off the field, and we are all over that slant. So we're getting the ball back with a minute left, and I have a plan with Will Rogers to hit the deep post route on this next one, which he's going to do. That will take us to the 30. So we've closed in on field goal range very quickly, and normally he's not a great runner, but I'm going to try and give it a shot for this one. It's nice that we've closed this game out the right way after not closing out the Minnesota one well, and this field goal for the win is going to make us 7-4. and four. I think we're going to miss Will Rogers a ton next season, but we're going to have more options at quarterback because we just picked up four-star Justin Woodring, and it'll all come down to what type of offseason Davis has for us. To end the year, we're playing in the Apple Cup, and it's a snow game, which I absolutely love, but it wasn't that interesting as their defense struggled all day to stop our offense, especially Dylan Johnson, which means we're about to knock off the first challenge of the video without sweating, but I might have spoken too soon because they're not out of it yet, and we've got to stop them since it's only a two-possession game on fourth and three. We should hold them, though, and okay, we're good. I thought he was about to hit that target off of his back foot, but he didn't, so we're going to get a big win in the snow, and Will Rogers has brought a lot of good things to this program, but I don't think he's going to bring a playoff appearance, which is unfortunate. As for the Heisman Trophy, Damian Martinez won it, and we made it into the Music City Bowl versus Auburn with one of our defenders winning an award. Matter of fact, he had two of them as he racked up 81 tackles, and Will Rogers only passed for 3,000 yards, so I thought Dylan Johnson was going to have a lot more rushing yards than this, and Washington not having any 1,000-yard receivers is really strange. It would be nice to wrap up this first season with a win, but for whatever reason, Auburn's actually favored, and with three minutes left, it's all tied up at 28. We're going to get the sack, though, so that's big because the ball is in Will Rogers' hands one final time, and on the run, he's going to make a nice throw over to Jeremy. From there, we've continued to fly down the field, and Denzel Boston's going to get open for the touchdown, but we left Peyton Thorne too much time, so we're getting the ball back with 33 seconds left, and I cannot believe it is all tied up at 35. This has been a shootout, but they're going to get the interception. I didn't think Scott was going to stick with our tight end, and that is probably going to do it for us. Everybody else was in zone coverage, but this guy never went away from who we wanted to target. So Auburn is going to take us down, and you best believe that I'm ready to get into the offseason. We're clearly going to lose a lot of talent, but that was always expected, and it's just a part of rebuilding, but I don't want Brandon Houston, because we're controlling a school that sent four players to the NFL, and we're going to have to pass up on these four players, but it should allow us to get our top two targets, and it's nice to see those two yellow names, which means that we are not going to lose to Auburn again in the battle for Corey Julius. Not only did we sign the 12th best recruiting class in the country, but we also just knocked off our second challenge by signing an 88 plus recruit. And it looks like he's somehow dropped three overalls, but it should still make him a 91 overall defensive tackle. As for athlete John Bean, we have no choice but to move him over to cornerback and we need wide receivers going forward. So Carson Trickett's going to help us out. We also got multiple middle linebackers. So I'm going to move one of them over to be a pass rusher. And now it's time to see how much work our players put in during the off season with a lot of positives here. I'm seeing some nice jumps and I just got to find our quarterback who ended up going up by five overalls. I think that means that we have to roll with the sophomore and I don't know how he's going to do with this schedule because it gets pretty difficult from the start. Going into season two, we're still supposed to be a top 25 team and our projected finish in the Big Ten is pretty similar to last year's. So on the field, the bar is going to have to be set high because this recruiting class isn't that great. There's Jim Marcus Johnson who we need at corner and then three-star athlete Brian Hampton who we might move over to running back. But we have a lot of team needs to fill, especially on defense, and I feel like those players don't cover at all. I think we got really lucky in finding prospects like Corey Julius last season because this guy's already our best player, and it's time to see what Demarius Davis can do versus Boise State. The sophomore's gonna have to step up big time because I can't imagine opening this season with a loss, and so far it's been all right. I mean, he is a 6'5 quarterback that can throw lasers up the middle while also being able to scramble, so there really shouldn't be much to complain about, and Will Nixon was able to score our first touchdown of the year. I have high expectations for this team on third and 15. We're not gonna give it up, hopefully. That would be terrible. And thankfully, it got marked as a fourth and in inches. But with a couple minutes left in the third quarter, we only have a three-point lead. And it's aggressive to go for it on fourth and goal, but I felt like we had to. It would definitely be ideal if we could stop the Broncos again. They're gonna bounce off of that tackle. But going into the fourth quarter, it's third and one, and we stop them. Instead of taking their points as well, they're going for it where they're not gonna pick it up. So from here, we should be able to seal things. And I'm just gonna have a good time running it with Davis, who's gonna get us to the 25. This was a nice way to open up the year, especially with our halfback going off. And we have 17 players ready for a visit who are all going to come against Ohio 
State. I can't imagine this going well, but we have to start getting players to commit because we weren't quick enough on Pierce Howard who already chose Oregon. That was a cornerback that we really needed and we're just gonna have to hope for the best at home where I'd love if we were able to rack up three sacks and on paper, they're not much better than us. Plus they're coming off of a loss, so we'll see what we can do. On our first drive, they've gotten us to a third and 10, but we are gonna have Bernard up the middle and our defense has already stopped them once, so I cannot think of a better way to open up this game. That's the freshman wide receiver getting the touchdown. And when I tell you our defense has carried us in this performance, I mean it because they still have zero points and they still don't with four minutes left in the game, but Devin Brown's gonna slip on through. So our offense has to get back to work and there's no way that they're stopping us in man-to-man -man coverage because we have three amazing receivers we can trust. And that's one of the main reasons that we had so much success offensively versus the Buckeyes. This is another good run. And the sophomore quarterback did amazing, winning player of the game with this stat line. So I'd say that the future's looking pretty bright, especially since we landed all of these commits and that includes our top two targets, Brian Hampton and Marcus Johnson. Now there's only a few players I care about that we're still going after like Hunter Peterson and we should crush South Dakota State. I want this game to be over by halftime and there's a pretty decent chance it will be, but with 13 seconds left in the half, we only have a three possession lead and I'm hoping we can get them off of the field here, but we can't because they still have a timeout left and I'm sure that they're just gonna set up to take a field goal. So it's not a blowout, but it's better than Eastern Washington last year. I'll still take being up by two possessions and our offense is just gonna continue to get better as the season goes on. And it would be nice to reach the end zone in this situation where we're gonna come close, but because we were tackled a yard short, we have to run it in and that's what Demarcus Davis should do. At the end of the day, we'd hold on to our lead easily. So we're improving to three and oh, but now we have a stretch where we play USC, Oregon, and Michigan. So we're about to be challenged, but not in recruiting because we just landed even more prospects. The Trojans are a 95 overall, and I'm almost certain we played them on the road last year as well. So I don't know why we had to travel to the Coliseum, but it is what it is. On our first drive, we're getting close to reaching the end zone, and we're going to have to run around with Davis where he's going to shed that sack, but he wasn't able to escape all their pressure because he just got caught up here. So we'll settle for a field goal and hope our defense can hold him. One thing I thought would help us was their starting quarterback being out with a torn quad Miller Moss, but ended up turning out bad for us because Davis is also injured and him being out with a broken hand for six weeks is far from ideal, but at least our defense has stepped up against the Trojans and we need to hold them on the second down because with a minute and a half left, we still have our three point lead, but they're going to convert here and that's going to put them in field goal range, but we're going to get the interception with JV on green. I don't know how he was able to read it so perfectly, but I think he's going to take this one to the house and the senior cornerback clutched up because it would be almost impossible for them to come back now. So we're going to leave the Trojan stadium with a win and our offense truly wasn't the best. And you all will see what I'm talking about next week with Justin Woodring. He's the guy that we've recruited last season. And there's a lot of pressure on him because we are now ranked number six in the country. I'd say it's because of our number one ranked defense. So let's hope that Oregon doesn't figure out how to beat it. And I always expected us to have the best offense in the country when rebuilding Washington, but I would have never predicted defense. And here in the third quarter, it's all tied up at 10 where I'd love if we could get the ducks off of the field, but we haven't been able to do that in this half. This is a big third down where hopefully we're able to stop them and I have somebody over there that should make the hit. So they're going to have to settle for a field goal and we'll see if we can trust our offense to get us three points. We need at least that if we're going to respond back and I'm going for that deep post route, but it's knocked down and you all could probably see the issue I'm running into as Woodring is a left-handed quarterback. So that's a pick. I am not good at using lefties, especially when they're slow and I'm not able to scramble with them. That's another tutty. So we're going to fall behind by two possessions to the Ducks. And this is the perfect guy to take over Washington, replicating what Michael Penix did, but he's not able to make as many good throws. And even when he does, it isn't held on to. So it is now third and nine where we might have to go deep, but that wasn't open either. I tried to scramble and that's just a mess. I always roll out to the right with a lefty. And by the time there's about a minute left in the game, we're still losing. So my comeback hopes are practically gone. We're going to see if we can hit them with the deep shot over the top of their defense, but we can't. And the fact that I have to play with Woodring for the next five or six games is not ideal, but that was actually a great throw to Artis. And why does he look so fast? Every so often that weird speed boost happens in the game and I'll take it because he only has 94 speed and that looked like 100, but we're not going to get this onside kick, unfortunately. So unless we can stop them three times, we're not seeing the ball. And I want to see if our wide receiver is able to outrun their defense like that for a second time. Third and six, I expected the run and we got in. So it's not much, but we are going to have a chance to score on the Ducks. And you know exactly what route I'm going to. I'm not even going to look in any other direction. We're just going to bomb it up to the speedster and he comes away with the football. He's going to break free. Look at how quick he is. Ryan Artis, I did not know you were like this. And I know we recruited him with 94 speed, but we must have coordinator boost or something too, because he is playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, he's got 94. That means he doesn't have a single boost from an offensive coordinator. And we have found a new weapon for the rest of the year. I think we could go ahead and win every game this season. Even if our offensive coordinator
coordinator doesn't allow us to get his speed up there, and I'm ready to run up our new strategy. We might be dealing with a ton of injuries, but I'm confident in our ability to throw the deep ball, so I'm going to air it out here in the big house. And all we need is a look where they don't have safety help over on that side, but they do on this play, and that's going to be the issue if I always look deep. However, I think we have the look that we want in this situation if we get the right blocks, and that ball was not thrown as far as it should have been, but if it was, we would have had a touchdown. And after getting a pick six and another interception that set up this drive, we are in a very nice spot, but we're going to fumble it away, and I tried to roll out with the left-handed quarterback again. I always do it. I can't train my brain to not do it. It's frustrating because I'm pretty positive that I just gave Michigan a free field goal, and they're going to have an attempt at their first point, but it is well short, and we're actually going to have an opportunity to return this kickoff. That would be awesome if we could. A little back juke here, and then we're going to spin to the inside. And there was an open lane, but I ran into the defender. So it's just going to be 14 to 0. And the Wolverines opened up the second half scoring a touchdown. So we're going to have to start figuring things out offensively again. And it's really hard to run the option with a 59 speed quarterback. But Justin Woodring was willing to put his body on the line to get in there. And I don't understand why this defense is playing so well, but it is working out in our favor as we're going to stop him again. However, we fumbled the punt. We literally fumbled the punt. So they have it on our side of the field. And that is disgusting. But you know what? We are going to be able to hold them anyway. I am not worried, but maybe I should be because it's second and goal and they are about to get in. It's on our offense to run out the clock and we are going to take this handoff for like five or six. So that's a good start to this drive. And now Nixon's going to get a couple more, but we desperately need this third and two and he is going to do it for us. I think it'd be a perfect time to also hit them with the deep shot, but that route did not get open and that was a very far throw. So we need to convert on this third and four to end the game. And that is not the look that we wanted. I don't know why I tried to go deep twice, but evidently I like making getting the right result very hard because they still have the ball with time left. And you know what? We're just going to send in a blitz where they don't get it out. It is nice to be able to lean on our defense that much because I can't do a thing offensively and we're still a top five team in the country. All that we need is Davis's broken hand to heal because we're having success everywhere else, especially recruiting where all that's left is Hunter Peterson. And it is a blessing that our upcoming schedule is so easy. We're a higher overall than almost every team we play. And that's been a surprise since it's only year two, but maybe the Big Ten's having a down year and we already stopped them defensively, of course, but we need to get this third and one where we're not picking it up. I think we should go for it because it's still early in the game and I have a favorite target I want to hit who definitely made sure that he was able to get a foot in on this play. And that might be cheating to review it before I go over the challenge, the catch, but I'm doing it anyway because I don't trust this game to give it to us even though it's clearly a catch. Surprisingly though, the refs made the right move. So we've got it on a first and goal where there's no way that they're going to be able to hold us. From there, the game was surprisingly high scoring. I didn't see that coming, but there's no way that they're going to be able to pick up this third down. And we should have sacked them sooner, but it's all good because our defense is able to swarm to the ball. It's so weird that I'm cruising with Washington, but what's weirder is that we are not able to pull away from Iowa. They've been competing all day and that's going for six. I might have gone for a deep shot or two and I really wanted to in this situation, but I'm going to be smart because the whole reason we're even trailing is I haven't been taking what the defense gives us and that's a good throw. I'd like to say that I'm getting better with the lefty and he should complete this one over the middle of the field as well. So the this hasn't been much of a rebuild because we've just been dominating and let's see if Nixon's able to reach the end zone, but he's not. And on second and six, that is man to man coverage where the ball was inaccurately thrown to Williams. It wasn't intended for him. It was supposed to go to our tight end, but I'm not going to complain because it is now 24 all. Our defense should be able to win us this game. That is some amazing man to man coverage. And I trust them to hold it down on third down. We're going to get in that gap and now we can take a timeout. So it is our time to shine and we got the right block, which means, you know, we are going over to the speedster. There he goes. He is going to get past number seven. We just had to lead him a little bit. And look at that difference. He started off that route being very close to him. And even when he caught this ball, it was only like two yards of separation. But you fast forward to the end of it, zoom out a little bit, and you might see that defender all the way behind him. Those recruits that we landed last year have already made all of the difference that we need. Come on, boys. We just got to prevent them from picking up this fourth and five, and that's ball game. To be honest, by now, I thought we might lose two or three of these. But Justin Woodring's actually filled in nicely. And I think it's getting to the point where we got to start considering ourselves championship contenders. Our overall is not that far behind some of the other top dogs, and we know that our defense can hold it down for us, so let's just hope that we take care of business versus UCLA in the snow. And with seven seconds left in the half, we find ourselves up by 10. We want to get seven more though, and that's dropped. I guess there are some catches that Ryan Artist isn't able to make, but it's all good. We will take going up by 13 on the Bruins, and surely our defense will help us maintain this. Well, maybe not. With about a few minutes left, they're driving down the field down by six, and I just 
just missed that ball, but it could have been a pick six because I knew where they were going, and I'm just going to run commit where they have pitched it last second to get in. That means in order to win, we have to get a field goal on the Bruins, which shouldn't be an issue, but their defense in the second half has been a problem, and I just have to go to Ryan Artist, who was able to get behind them. Thankfully, he did it. Ever since he had those two explosive catches versus Oregon, that's the only player I look for, but I haven't gotten that speed boost animation again, which is a little unfortunate. We shouldn't get in here, and that was a close call because I want to just settle for a field goal. So that's what we'll do as time runs down and the undefeated dream season stays alive. Justin Woodring has slotted in nicely, but at any moment now, Demarcus Davis is going to be back from injury. And I can't imagine not starting him because even though Woodring has some decent throwing stats, they don't compete with Davis's, who's also quick. It's a good problem to have multiple quarterback options, and I feel like we do, so that's why we've had so much success, which I'm expecting to continue, especially because we have our good starter back and he can run the option. I did get used to using the slow lefty, but I'm ready to have someone like him because we're able to outrun the defense to get the first down like this. And Minnesota doesn't know what to do because we have so many options. It's been so nice to run up the score and know that we are going to do things amazing on offense, but it's only because we have our sophomore quarterback back and our defense that just shuts everybody down. It is third and 10 and they think they can take a deep shot, but we are going to intercept that with green and we might try to return this as well. Come on, just give me a couple more blocks and he is going to get around that edge He's going to beat one more player, and there we go. JV on green gets his second pick six of the season, and we just annihilated Minnesota, winning like 50 to 14. But I no longer see the strong safety we were going after on our board, so I hate to see that he decided to choose USC over us. I don't know why he'd do that since we're well above them in the conference standings, and we locked in our spot in the Big Ten Championship a long time ago, but we still have two more games to play, and Wisconsin's having one of the worst seasons I've ever seen from them with their only win against ranked Rutgers. Nothing about this file makes any sense, and we're only two years into the dynasty, but let's just go out and take care of business, because I know that we're the better team and we should get an easy win. We're going to take this pass over to Nixon, making it third and inches where it shouldn't be hard to punch it in. Like expected, we ran away with it pretty quickly, and this run at the end is just going to seal it as he wants to get even more stats, so that's going to be 48 points on the Badgers' head, and when our offense is putting up numbers like this, there's not much the other team can do. All that's left now is the Apple Cup, and Washington State might be a hard match, but we have a fully healthy team, and we're at home, so I have nothing to worry about. We've been waxing programs left and right, and there's no way that they're going to keep up with our speedster. It's not even a good throw, but we should have had a touchdown, and I think the Cougars are going to get the first points of the game unless we can generate a sack, which we couldn't. You don't love to see it, especially since their kicker drills the kick, but we can respond back pretty quick, and I see artists, but they're still going to have a player over to make a tackle. That takes us to the end of the first quarter, and if you thought we were actually kicking a field goal, you'd be out of your mind, but him being a lefty just changed the buttons. I hit square because that's what you normally hit, but the route wasn't even out there on the field. They're not getting this, so we're holding them again. But that's frustrating that we didn't get the fake field goal, and their drives have been taking a ton of time off the clock, but they're not ready to stop our offense, which is quick. And we've been flying down the field. Now on third and five, we're going to go for the end zone shot, and our tight end's going to bring it in. However, approaching the end of the third quarter, we find ourselves trailing, so we have to pick up this fourth and nine, and thankfully, Demarcus Davis was able to scramble, because without his rushing ability, this would have gotten ugly. And I'm expecting that we get them off the field on third and nine where all they have open is something up the seam and we don't make a play on it. You have got to be kidding me. This is a bit of a wake up call because we have been dominating every matchup and now with four minutes left we're trailing to our rivals but we've been flying down the field and we had our receiver open until they caught back up to him and there's no way that Roback actually got his hands up and picked that ball off. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I didn't even consider him a threat to potentially make a play but all of a sudden things are not looking too good for us and we know the run's coming on third and four but they've decided to pass so they're going to toast us, that's going to probably seal the game. We could have gotten them off of the field. I can't believe we're losing to them, but this is a wake-up call before the 12-team playoffs, and we only dropped to number five, so we could still be playing for a first-round bye, especially since we went undefeated in Big Ten Conference play, and we just have to bounce back versus the Nittany Lions. I remember they gave us a lot of issues last year, but this is a new team, and I'm confident we can beat them, especially since we're going to end the first quarter going up 14-3, to but this is just the start. We have to hold on to our lead, and whenever we're able to get up this early, that's that's when we don't have issues normally. This should be a third down stop, but they just got over the marker and I hate trying to stop their hurry up offense. It is so frustrating. It will just continue to go on and until they have a bad play or something, they will knock it out of hurry up mode, which is why they're getting a touchdown. That puts the pressure on us offensively and we have halfback screens, which normally work wonders, but this one isn't. And I feel the need to go for it on fourth and two where I know our running back is open, but they actually got over to that ball. I just had a loss of words for a second. We need Davis to make a big hit on Washington and this is the choking that I 
I was talking about. I know I play on Heisman, the hardest difficulty, but sometimes I feel like I suck. And I was due for a stupid interception like that on second and goal. Everything's boxed up. That should have been picked. And that's the stuff that you normally don't see. There's so many times when the computer just doesn't make the play that you need them to on third and goal. There we go. This is the interception that we were looking for. That's great. That's going to swing momentum back in our favor if we can get out of here. And it's a really bad idea to mix play action in on this situation, but it also gives us a chance to bond them deep to Artis and he dropped it. Third and eight now. They send a blitz. I just got to get it out in time. And this is a monumental game to our success this season where on third down, they almost threw us another interception, but instead they're going to get a field goal out of it. And I want to get some points before the half so bad, but their man-to-man -man coverage is clamping us. I mean, we might have some stuff open underneath, but there's one player I've been looking at and he just can't outrun their defense. So struggles continued for us in the third quarter. So at the start of the fourth, we are falling behind 10 and I've been going for highlight plays on this video all day because that's what makes rebuilds good. There is a highlight play finally. I don't want the easy points. I want the ones that look impressive and this is going to be another one. Just wait. We are going to find him at the back of the end zone. So Jeremy Bernard is going to get it back within three and it's on our defense to get Penn State off of the field one final time where we're going to do it. It might have taken all game, but the offense is starting to come alive and again, we are going to have the deep shot. I've been waiting for these to get open all day. It took them so long to finally press us and give us a look where there's no safeties covering on that side. Now we have to make a tackle because now it's fourth and three so we could actually get them off the field and I can't believe they went with the run but Green was not able to bring number six down and Javion's been one of our best defenders so that is incredibly disappointing to see. This is for a spot in the college football playoffs probably so it's incredibly important that they're not able to reach the end zone and they had their corner route but they didn't take it. Fourth and nine now we just need them to make the wrong read but they're gonna have somebody deep. They found the spot in the cover too and in case they hand it off I ran commit but they went with the pass instead and we're gonna get the sack. They are panicking and having Drew Aller spike the ball making it third and goal where I'm not gonna be able to stick with all the slants. He takes off and come on, bring him down. We cannot lose the season like this. No way that they get in. Let's stop him there. And that was so close, but our defense is going to get another win for us. It's always our defense. They bail me out when I play terribly offensively and Jeremy Bernard deserved to win player of the game because he single-handedly got us our first Big Ten championship. That's another challenge that I've been able to complete, but we didn't have a player that was a Heisman finalist and that makes sense, but we did have good defenders with Foster winning multiple awards. And you could say that the freshman linebacker made a massive difference for this team. We also had two quarterbacks that almost combined for 4,000 passing yards, and Will Nixon was a better running back than Dylan Johnson. It came close, but we didn't have a 1,000 yard receiver again, and we jumped all the way up to the number three spot, so we've gotten a buy in the first round of the playoffs, and I'm kind of rooting for playing Penn State again, because Alabama's a 99 overall team, and they doubled the Nittany Lions score with ease, so we might be in a bit of trouble. I don't know if we're able to compete with the SEC schools, but we're about to find out, and I feel like if we can beat Alabama, we can beat any Anybody. But before we finish the rest of the video, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks. With the NFL playoffs going on, this is the perfect time to get the app, and you can play in over 30 states, so there's a good chance yours is eligible. Anyway, you're probably wondering what Prize Picks is, and on there you simply pick higher or lower on player projections, where if you're right, you can win up to 25 times the money. But I also like attempting smaller entries like these, and if you want some free cash to start out with on Prize Picks, code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to $100. The NFL games even have multiple stat lines lines that you can choose between now. So if you want to shoot for even higher payouts, you can go down that route. But whatever you do, remember to play responsibly. And let's get back to getting the Huskies a championship. This is our chance to see how good our team really is. And it's 0-0 zero to, zero to start the third quarter where we get the third down stop. That is a huge tackle because the Crimson Tide had like a four minute drive on us, but they're only getting three points out of it. And they'd maintain that lead into the third quarter, but we've done a good job of staying in it. Boston's going to shed that tackle. So our drive stayed alive. And on this third and two with the option run, there is so much open grass for Davis. I don't even want to pitch it at this point. I just want to see how many yards he can get, which has set us up beautifully to score a touchdown. And there was no time with that blitz. I'm not sure what the wise move would be here. I almost wanted to laser it up the seam, but we are going to take it over to Williams to the two. And we are actually competing with a 99 overall team. Just one more yard to get in and the halfback toss normally works out for us. But our defense has been atrocious as they've moved it all the way down the field. And we're lucky that didn't count as a touchdown. But now the refs are reviewing it. And from the looks of it, I don't think he got that right foot down, but they gave it to him anyway. And that means it is our turn to respond back where I should have just taken that hitch. That's not how you want to end the third quarter, but we picked up the last third and long and they've sent a blitz, but our man-to-man -man route got open. So I'm frustrated that he wasn't able to catch it. And I don't know where they're going to take this punt to, but they're probably going to be near field goal range. They've already broken one tackle on us and it's been a pretty even matchup, but we could be in trouble if we can't get them off the field on this third and two, where they are going to just go to Kendrick Law to the 10. I had some high hopes, but I've been let down on on this
miss first and goal. Jalen Milrose going to find Haynes and no one's over there. So the pressure is on and we have got to score quick. We know what works best. It's throwing it up to our fastest player, but those throws have not been on target. So I'm going to be smarter and go underneath with the wide receiver screen instead. And a few plays later, they've gotten us to a fourth and three, but I'm not worried because Denzel Boston got open. We are still fine. There's plenty of time left, but we have got to get down into the end zone quick. That's a great play from Boston. And I'm not sure if handing it off the Nixon's the right move in this situation because that drains more clock, but we'll eventually get in. We have three timeouts so we can kick it deep and just hope that our defense gets a stop where I know that they're going to run so we can just stack the box. And what are they doing passing the ball? You've got to be kidding me. Prentice is going to break that tackle. What is Alabama doing? The computer never passes in that situation, but they just got the easiest touchdown of their life. And we have to save all three of our timeouts while working it down the field on the Crimson Tide. I think we're about to take a sack though. And that is a great play from Davis. I think he's going to have at least one more season with Washington unless we're able to pull off the comeback and we caught it, which I was not expecting. That was a bad read, but it works out in our favor and that post should be placed perfectly, but Alabama got back to it. If you all saw what I saw on that one, that one had the potential to be a great throw, but now our wide receivers want to forget how to catch and I almost took a sack here. We got to throw it away. Davis is holding his chest too, and I'm starting to wonder if we should have just taken our field goal, but we have the lefty in and that's a first. Davis is out for one quarter, which means he's done for the game, but it is all good. That is why we have a solid backup and it's still going to come down to our defense, even if we're able to reach the end zone, but that's another bad drop. And on third down, we're just going to have to take this hitch route, which worked out. All right. We've been very quick when it comes to getting down the field and I'm still going to kick it deep because we know what's coming. They're not going to pass it again. And we are all over it. Getting a field goal should not be that difficult, but I am a little afraid they're going to pass it on third down and there's no way. Okay. It was marked as fourth and inches. So we have hope in this matchup. We might have a backup quarterback, but it is all good. I trust him and we could get in field goal range with a decent return. That's going to be bounced off. Come on, just one guy to beat. And in the end, we just wasted time instead. Man-to-man -man coverage. I know that we're going to have that route open on the left side of the field. So all is good. We're moving the rock down and I cannot take a sack. I can't believe that Woodring is able to scramble for this much. My instincts kicked in like we had a fast quarterback and I guess it paid off. We have our running back open in the flat. Nixon needs to get out of bounds here and he is going to be able to. Now this might be very greedy, but I kind of want to take one very quick shot to the end zone. And if nothing's open, we can just throw it away. I think I might have had triangle there, but I was so worried that that might not work out and you all would hate me. So it is time for overtime where our best option is probably feed our running back who looks really quick. And I don't like that we're the first team to get possession of the ball, especially since their defense is so solid. Third and seven now. We just got to get this out in time. I know that we have the slant. That's going to be thrown into an interception. The other guy bit on it. Are you kidding me? Just make the tackle. He was naked open, but the other route is unfortunately going to cause some interference. And I've been trying to force fumbles on Alabama, maybe an interception. They almost did there, but they didn't give it to us. So all of the comeback hopes are for nothing. That was a great game, but it hurts to see the final score and we lost to the team that would end up winning it all. That tells me we should be really good next season, assuming not that many players declare for the draft. And the one player that is, Jeremy Bernard, was going to have to either way because he's a senior. Now we are losing a couple transfers, but they're freshmen that would never play. So I'm not worried about it. And I really don't want either of these guys. We don't need them as we had another top 15 class. And even if the overalls aren't the highest, I feel like we filled all of our team needs. Like I thought, Brian Hampton makes for a great halfback and Vernon Nance would be good at quarterback, but we also need him at corner. I also didn't realize we built up such an elite room of defensive tackles and Devin Bryant's just an extra linebacker. So I'm moving him over to right end where if he progresses the right way, he should start over Lance. Now it's time to see if we're going to have a championship caliber roster. And to be completely honest, I don't see us losing very much. I'm so confident in what we've built. I'm not worried about recruiting and I'm maxing out everything in our game management skill tree, but I do wish that our coordinators were a little better and I don't want to jinx anything anything, but compared to previous years, this schedule looks like cake. I know we're only projected to finish ninth, but I'm expecting us to run the table because at least in the Big Ten, we're projected to finish number one and this roster's up to a 95 overall. It's exciting to have this much talent and to start the year, we're playing North Dakota State. So we should cruise to an easy first win, especially if they're going to press our best wide receiver. There's no way that they keep up with artists. Even with a player stuck in like glue, he was able to reel in the catch, getting us inside their red zone, but the refs are hitting us with a clipping penalty. So it's back to passing the ball and man man coverage is not going to work against this team. Just from this drive alone, I'm excited for the year and the freshman halfback is the first player to reach the end zone for us. At the end of the day, our goal is to just run up the score because with two years left in the rebuild, we still need to complete these three challenges and it took our best effort, but somehow we were able to beat them worse than Florida State got beat by Georgia. It was a good game all around with Demarcus Davis throwing for five touchdowns and 63 to zero is crazy. We've also recruited so well in previous years that this season I'm not even stressed about it. So our main focus is going to be winning games and getting our quarterback into the Heisman race, but he's not up there yet. Right now we have the number one offense and defense though. So I hope that can continue.
continue against Northwestern, and this is a battle for the best purple school in the Big Ten. To be honest, not much was interesting about this matchup. It was just a blowout where Davis just fooled around with their defense and did whatever he wanted, but that didn't count as a touchdown, so he might as well try and pass for one where this is going to be stopped short. We have three more attempts, so eventually we're going to get it, and that's going to make us 2-0, with Davis having five total touchdowns again, and that's enough for him to appear in the Heisman race. Now, if he can take down USC, he'll definitely shoot up the boards, but this is never an easy game, and I swear that we always have to play this one on the road. I don't get it, but at least we won it last year, so I want to be confident in our abilities, but here in the second quarter, we find ourselves trailing 21-0, and that deep post route isn't open. I think we've been negatively impacted by the fact that we're going for these huge chunk plays, but I'm just going to have to scramble on this one since their coverage is so good, and I wonder if we're even able to come back down by 21 points. That should be a touchdown if it's put on the money and it's dropped. You all probably thought things were so sweet after those first two games, but they have sent heat in our direction, and I'm not good at handling that. Now it is third and 18. The odds of picking this up are not that good, but we're going to try and hit the deep post where it is swatted down. I'm not even sure if our freshman kicker can hit from here, but we're going to go for it. And I don't know what's happened to the defense that was so solid last year, but we just keep giving up big plays. All of a sudden, it's going to be 28 to 3, just like the Falcons versus the Patriots. So we might have a chance at coming back. And I want to pull it off just because I thought we were going to have an undefeated season this year. That was a nice juke, but you're not going to get around. And there's no way that we get the look that we want on this play. We might as well go for the deep shot though. And what a cannon that Davis has. I cannot believe that he just made that pass. All you have to do is throw it up to Ryan Artis. And we learned that last year versus Oregon. So we're going to try and get them off the field, but that wouldn't happen as that drive just led to another touchdown for them. So we're stepping up. I don't know how we got that pass off, but it's knocked down. Press man-to-man -man coverage could get interesting if we have enough time and we do. So we're going back in Ryan's direction. He has cooked 36 for a second time, but we're still trailing by 25. So almost all hope feels lost at this point. And I can't believe that this is not going to be an undefeated season, but we can still try our best. It really isn't going to matter what we do though. Our defense just gave up another touchdown. That's going to probably be a sack for Davis. I don't know how he is still standing and how he is still running, but we still lost 49 to 24. So we're just going to have to accept that we're not going undefeated. And it's a little late to start caring about recruiting. So we're just going to leave it as it is. I was a little bit too confident going into this year, especially for a team that's only a 95 overall. And I'm just confused what happened to our defense because last season it was complete lockdown. But this year it's like we're trying to replicate 2023 USC and it's working. That's for sure. This is not going to be a good third down throw and nothing is going our way. It is a miracle to start the second quarter that we have a chance to actually reach the end zone, but it's dropped. And I'm just going to call a quarterback blast. See if that does the trick because sometimes Davis just has to do it all by himself. By the third quarter, it is still all tied up at seven. And I think we have the deep post. Please tell me that throw is on the money, but Ryan Artis dropped the ball. So we just keep having to get onto the defensive side of things where we get the sack. And it's nice to see our defense stepping up, but I want our offense to do the same thing. And we are not going to bomb their cover three, which means we just have to take the slant to Boston. This team is not as good as I thought it might be, but that is a perfect throw. And it motivated UCLA to drive all the way down the field on us where they want to take that drag, but it is not open. And we have made it fourth and one. They're playing so passively against us. And I already know the comments on this video are going to be, don't take so many deep shots, go for something underneath, but it's beautiful to try. And it's the only reason that UCLA still has a chance in this matchup where it's fourth and seven, they're going for the end zone and that's going to be picked off by Bean. We recruited the stud that's going to seal our win in this matchup. And that's a great run from Davis, but his passing stats are terrible in this matchup. So we are going to try and run it up a little bit more. And what did their safety just do? This is going to be caught. And that was a close call, but I think Denzel Boston still got a foot in. The refs didn't take it away. So that was the right move because his stat line looks a little bit better. And that means he's going to stay in the Heisman watch. I feel like our conference is still very winnable with Minnesota being undefeated and us having a chance to ruin that. It also just hit me that after this year, we're losing a lot of really good seniors. So this might be our best chance to win it all. And we don't have a rushing attack. Freshman Brian Hampton has been pretty disappointing. And on third and seven, I didn't see anything open until late. That is what we're going to look for with Davis and he is going to get it over to Williams, which is going to go for a lot of yards. I gotta say, this is a fun team to play with, even if we have had some dumb mistakes, and I'm trying to keep it realistic, just taking deep shot after deep shot, slinging the rock all around like Washington did this season. If I'm gonna hit 4,000 passing yards, that's what I have to do, and they have everybody back there in the end zone, so we're scrambling, but it is fumbled away by Davis. They pick it up, and there's no way that anybody is going to catch this player. He's just too quick. That was such a disappointing end to that drive, and on our 
next one. It is fourth and one. We went for it, but everything's been boxed both man coverage. So we're just going to have to go to Rashid Williams, who got enough separation. And that is why I like going back to him. He's willing to fight for all of that extra yardage that we need. And now we have a slant, but it's an inaccurate throw. So this is the type of stuff that's going to lose us the game. You can't even make it up at this rate. We keep trying to go for those deep shots. And there's a good one, but no credit for the touchdown pass because Ryan Artis just fell down. So we're going to have to take the slant. And I'm only going for the touchdown passes so we can win the Heisman Trophy. It would make life 20 times easier if I could just run it in and our man coverage didn't stick for long enough on third down. So Minnesota's drive stays alive and it looks like it's probably going to result in a touchdown. Our team was just meant to win it all last year. They were on a tear, but we forced the fumble. That's big. And I wish we would have picked it up, but I'll take holding them to a field goal and the false start backs them up even more, but it's not going to matter. See, we could probably play it smart and just run the ball, but I'm trying to have fun, throw up some deep bombs with Washington. And this is how you actually play with the Huskies. That's great. Ryan Artis with the nice 69 yard touchdown on the Gophers. And then they ended up working it all the way down the field on us, but we can still get a stop because it is third and goal. It's a handoff. And are you serious? I knew exactly what was coming and I was there, but I still missed. So at least we held them on the two pointer and please press the wide receiver that you have been struggling to stop all day. That sounds like a great idea. He is going to dust your defense. I don't get what Minnesota could be thinking, but these are the looks that I've been always hoping are there. So when we finally get them, I'm going to take advantage of it. And I just want us to have success on one defensive possession where they've passed it on third down and I'm taking a timeout because there's too much time to go for it still. So the computer is punting us the ball and I might have had an idea that they were going to do that, but I don't care. I refuse to lose a game like this to Minnesota of all teams. And we still have to get the first down, which is not a given. Davis is going to get like 10, but we need about three more yards. And with our freshman halfback, he doesn't get it. I punted it back to them. And let's just say they've already gotten one 20 yard pass. We need to get a pick, but John Bean won't hold on. And we sent five in to hopefully get some pressure, which worked out pretty well in our favor. Now it is third and 15 and they missed the slant. So it all comes down to this. And that is a screenplay. We are all over it. You know what? I think we can trust our defense again because they just clutched up for us and we still have a long season ahead, but it gets a lot easier after these next two matchups. It's also us versus Devin Brown for the Heisman right now. And we're going on the road at Iowa who somehow has a top 10 offense. I don't know what they got cooking over there, but this is not a realistic dynasty file. And I don't know what happened to their defense, but we have been shredding it all game. I'm not kidding when I say that they have not stopped us one time in this matchup. And Demarcus Davis is going for his fifth touchdown pass while our defense has been making one of the top offenses in the country look terrible. Even though it's only the third quarter, they've given up as they're attempting field goals and we actually have a chance to return this as well. I gotta see if Williams has the speed to get to the outside. That would be awesome. I've never returned a field goal before and I think we are finally going to make it happen. We got all the blocks that we needed and I hope there's no flags. Justice Williams just set a record, and that is the bounce back win that we needed. I know we also beat Minnesota, but we didn't look good like this. And six games into the season, we lead the country in passing yards while also having the Heisman favorite. We don't have a freebie versus Oregon though, and this is a big visit week for us. So we need to make sure that we impress those recruits, even though our goal is to still win it all this season. This was the team that we learned that we could take deep shots against. So we're gonna go for it again. And that is such a terrible throw, but it was also his first one of the game. And from there, the rest of the first half would be crazy. That's why we need to start the third quarter by getting a stop. And I hope that we're able to get over to that halfback screen, which we are. And now is an opportunity where we could go up by two possessions on the Ducks. Davis is going to avoid taking the sack. And this is the beauty of having a fast quarterback. It's awesome. I mean, I had reads wide open that I could have taken, but it was either go for the deep shot or just scramble for the first. And that's what we ended up doing. There's no reason to make it more complicated than it has to be. And I'm going to have all the time in the pocket back here. Just keep giving me all the time. Davis is going to scramble and look at his legs making a difference. If you all can't tell, I am having a ton of fun using him, but I just threw a pick for no reason. And I don't know why I thought we were going to get a cool animation, but we didn't because we mossed to nobody in the end zone. And I think Oregon's going to take a lead because I wanted a highlight play. Third and goal though, so we might actually stop them. There we are. And what an ending to the third quarter. They're going to be pansies and kick a field goal while we're still going to mess around with them running the Wildcat with no fear at all. I'm not concerned about losing to the Ducks because they press some of our fastest wide receivers and then we can and just take deep stuff like this to Denzel Boston. So we're about to reach the end zone again, and there it is. I'm not gonna lie, that win against Iowa really raised my confidence. We should have picked it, but even though we didn't, they still decided to punt it back to us. So basically, all we need is Brian Hampton to rush for one or two first downs, and that'll seal it. He is fighting, and he is still up and going. The freshman might be small, he might be slow at times, but he also has some great moments. And if we lose this game, I deserve it, but I am going for the deep shot on Oregon. They were pressing 83. You all already know 
know who that is and he catches it. There was no reason he should have reeled that in, but he did. So now we're about to take a 10 point lead and I better not screw this up. All we have to do is reach the end zone. Thank you. There has been a lot of stat padding during this season already, but I'm okay with it because we have a Heisman contender and imagine how much in the lead he'd be if I didn't throw dumb picks. This season is all for Michael Penix because he should have won it and we got some commits while also losing out on some other ones. But what stands out to me is the fact that we're not climbing much in the polls and it's just nice to know that we're back to being on top of our division. I think we've already gotten through a lot of our hardest matchups. So against Wisconsin, I hope we can run up the score, but because it's raining, it might be hard to do that. And I was correct. With two and a half minutes left in this game, we are losing to the Badgers by seven, but there's a ton of time back here in the pocket, which is why we're going to pick up the first down to Williams. And I guess I wasn't even in the pocket, but I don't care. I just want to get this team back on the board and the rain has just destroyed us. It's functioning about as well as an obese 80 year old that's trying to get it up one final time. And even though we scored, if our defense doesn't step it up, we're going to lose to the Badgers as we give that up. This is disgusting because we are not guaranteed to be a playoff team right now. And they're starting to run the clock down so I can just safely assume that they're in field goal range. We need to hit their QB. But he did not fumble. So it is third and seven. And we could have had a sack there, but he dodged it. Please get the interception. Thank you, Warner. That is the clutchest play of the year because if somehow we could get into field goal range, that would be awesome. And they sent in the blitz. We are going to loft it over their defense. It is caught down to the 45, but that is not enough. So it is Hail Mary time. And I'm not sure if I've ever had one of these go well for me on the channel, but there's three guys down there in the end zone and it's picked. We're headed to overtime where we're starting on defense. And all we have to do is make sure that they don't pick up this third and three, but instead we give them a touchdown. There is a well-known overtime glitch and I don't trust this game. So I'm going for the two point conversion. If we get in and it's just a few yards away now, but their defense is all over Davis and I need to start scheming for what I think the two point conversion play should be because I don't know if it's going to be him scrambling around. I think they're running a blitz on third down and they were, so we're going to have somebody open, but there's no way that they're going to give us this touchdown. They have to review it. There it is. The refs are saying they're challenging it and he just glided out of bounds, but he might have dragged a foot. Well, they said the play stands and my first read's going to be Hampton, but they've stuck with him. So we're going to have to take the drag instead. That was such a stressful ending, but we got got the right result at home. So now we get to celebrate by whooping up on Nevada. I'll be pretty upset if this one's even close. And approaching halftime, we are only up by seven points, but we are about to make it 14 with Brian Hampton, the freshman halfback catch in the pass. There's simply just no way that they're able to keep up with our wide receivers. That's what I was expecting, but they have been doing a good job. So that's why we haven't racked up that many points. And on this deep post, we would have had it, but I waited a little too long. So it's a good thing that we completely took care of business in the fourth quarter against the Wolfpack. Stat-wise, Demarcus Davis still had four touchdowns, but he's still pretty far away from 4,000 yards. And it just hit me that all we need is a Heisman finalist to complete that challenge. For some reason, I thought it was Heisman winner, but we should be good for that one. And we literally need to just start spraying the ball. I don't care if we throw five interceptions. As long as the passing yards are good and we win, that's all that matters. So you know that I'm about to have a blast just heaving up deep balls and hoping for the best. And you all normally only see the good ones, so you don't know how much struggling I have to go through. To get these highlight plays, it is not as simple as you might think and we are just gonna have to roll out throw this one on the run and hope that it's caught which it is it is actually caught by Ryan I don't know how the defender missed it but that's gonna completely change the trajectory of the game and we literally destroyed them winning 42 to 10 which is just crazy Nebraska football is not any good and even though we didn't get as many yards as I would have liked Davis still threw for almost 300 and now we get a much deserved back-to-back -back bye weeks before finishing out the year I did notice that our rivals Washington State are inside the top three though so after we play Rutgers, we have a tough one coming up. They beat us last year and apparently they're good again. But what blows my mind is this is a tight matchup versus the Scarlet Knights. There's only a few minutes left and it is all tied up at 10. I don't understand why we are performing this badly, but they've been clamping our receivers up with their man-to-man -man coverage until this play. Williams is going to get us to the 40 and I'm honestly just going to settle for a field goal at this rate. We just need one more first down to do it successfully and that's what we'll get with Hampton. So we've picked up another win and it's time for our real test, but they lost last week, so now they're playing for a playoff spot. There is a lot on the line in this game for them, so I would just love to knock them out. Davis is going to run on this first play, which should get him like a 25-yard gain, but midway through the third quarter, it is 17-7, to and we should have known that it would never be easy to win the Apple Cup. I think we're going to have a lot of time back here since they have two quarterback contains out there trying to stop Davis. It's still not going to matter, and we just have to get them off the field on this third and 11 where we're sending in a blitz. They get it out to their slant, and he's short. I don't believe their kicker 
striker has a leg to hit it from 55, but it turns out he does. And it's just so disrespectful that they come out pressing our best wide receiver, but our center didn't give us enough time to get it up to him. That's wild because we probably would have had a touchdown, but they gave us another chance and the pressure just got in too quick. That would lead to another field goal. So with less than four minutes remaining, we find ourselves trailing by nine points in the Apple Cup. And it's just hard to believe that we're struggling this much, but we're going to go up the middle to our tight end and something has awoken in our offense because we are starting to have a lot more success. Sir Marcus Davis just broke a record as well, but that's not updated to include this year's Michael Penix, so it could be different. What's important is we've gotten them to third and 12, and I'm not expecting a run. They're going with the pass. Hopefully our coverage can stick with them, but what is our safety doing? He just gave it up over the middle. All he had to do was not that, and it is so frustrating, but we could get the pick, and why did Johnson not animate? This is starting to get so frustrating, and they're actually passing instead of running, but it's going to work in their favor. They're going to the one. I wish they'd just get in already and end our pain. There it is. So we find ourselves down by nine in the Apple Cup. I thought we were going to beat Washington State every year, but instead this has proven to be one of our most difficult games and their defense just knows how to play us way differently than everybody else. I don't know why that is. We're going to go to the 45, but it really doesn't matter because no matter what, if we want to come back, we have to get the onside kick. So I'm just going to send up a prayer and we might have this one to our tight end just based off of how the players lined up from the start. So that's nice, but there's 26 seconds left. We need them to mess up with this onside kick. Please don't catch it. And they do. That is so unfortunate. Well, that might have just put us out of the playoffs. And it's a good thing that we still make our conference championship. We didn't drop down as far as I thought we might, which is nice. But we have to play Penn State again. And winning against them is never easy. If we lose this one, I can pretty much guarantee that we won't make the playoffs. So I should probably take it a bit more seriously. But instead, I've thrown up some jump balls. And so we're tied starting the second quarter. But we might be able to thread this one to the end zone. And that's going to be caught. Our defense also got an interception, so that could lead to another touchdown, as you know I'm going back to artists. And I don't care how bad some of these plays have been, I'm having a blast. Demarcus Davis is throwing the ball wherever he wants to, and whenever he doesn't throw the ball, he makes a play on the run. By the end of the first half, it's about to be 21-0, to zero, and that was a throw to a route that you all have never seen me hit before. I actually really like the placement of it. It was just a random hitch in between the zones, and things clearly have not gone as well in the second half as they just got it within four. Actually, it's three, because they got the two-point conversion. Version. So I'm not feeling very good right now, and I would love if we could pick this up. I'm a throw it on the run, but I should have taken it sooner. And it's starting to hit me that I might have choked a 21-point lead in the conference championship. It happened so quick, I didn't even realize how bad it got. But now we're down by four, and one mistake, and we're going to lose this game. Penn State is playing us so hard. I cannot believe that we are about to miss the playoffs because we have choked. And in this situation, there's really only one option I can trust. It is not open. This might actually be picked. Okay, that was really close. I cannot believe how many of those I have thrown blind, just hoping for a highlight. But I like the pressure and having to step up in the moment where we're about to score a touchdown. We just have to get one more yard here and they are blowing that run up. So it's fourth and three with the game on the line and we have our corner route, but it was a little off target. That might not have been a touchdown. And there's the ref challenging it. If we lose this game because he couldn't get a foot in, I'm going to be so upset. And it says the play stands. That was so close. I really couldn't tell. But we're going to win back to back Big Ten Conference Championships. And this entire season has been a mess. It's nice to see the trophy in our hands though, but we want the national title. And look at that, Demarcus Davis won the Heisman Trophy. There were also three losses of teams above us, so we have flown up into getting a first round bye, and we'll easily get 4,000 passing yards in our next game. But for now, all we can do is check off the Heisman Trophy one. And what a season from Davis. 48 touchdowns to eight interceptions, while also rushing for six, and Brian Hampton was not good. Even with all those yards though, we still had one 1,000 yard receiver, but Armin Parker is the defender to talk about. He's our second best defensive tackle, but somehow he led the team in tackles. And why did Corey Julius have this many as well? Half of our defense was the award finalist for these defensive awards. And it wasn't even that good, but we did give up the least amount of rushing yards. So I'll take that. And our side of the bracket doesn't look that tough. I mean, I could be wrong, but neither of these teams are normally here. And they're not necessarily powerhouses I'd be afraid of in 2024. But maybe 10 or 15 years ago, it'd be a different story. Baylor's going to end up winning. So we'll be facing them next. And I still don't know if we can win it all with this team. In order to to do so, we're going to have to win three straight. And our quarterfinal matchup is here in the Rose Bowl, where it seems like we're about to get off to a great start as we should reach the end zone on this play. And it's Rashid Williams that's held onto the ball, who's had an amazing year. What I'm worried about is whether or not our defense can get stops and get them off the field. We had a zone there and we should have stopped them, but it's fourth and inches. So thankfully, we were still able to hold them and they have pressed our receivers, which means we should go for the deep shot, but it was underthrown. I'm going to attempt it one more time since they keep on going back to pressing us. And that ball was placed perfectly on the money over to Williams and he is going to take this one to the house with nobody coming
even close. That's not Rashid though, that's Justice Williams who caught that touchdown. And this first game is getting kind of out of hand already. We could stop them on this third and nine, which would be great because they have to punt the ball again and the Bears better figure things out soon, but I think we're gonna be able to go over the top again. So we are up 21 to zero in the quarterfinals and they've gotten a little bit of life in them moving it down the field, but they also gave us a lot of time before the half to get points ourselves. And this is the first time I'm gonna actually take the underneath route. We'd finish that drive off too, but by the fourth quarter, Baylor still wasn't out of it as they made sure to keep it a two to three possession game at all times. But we've gotten them to a third and one where they go with the run and we are all over it. We could end their season right now and we just need our defense to clutch up, which they should do. So we are headed on to the semifinals and Demarcus Davis played well, getting his passing total over 4,000 yards now. So the only challenge in the rebuild left is to win it all. And it's about time to find out who we play next with that game being for a spot in the national championship. Two seeded South Carolina finds themselves in a fourth and eight where they're not going to pick it up. So Georgia would hold on and that's not good for us. The Bulldogs are a 97 overall and the only teams left in this thing are SEC schools. So you can tell how much the conference has dominated and that's where all the good programs were at during this rebuild. Georgia has already scored on us, but it looks like we're going to respond back and it was none other than Ryan Artis that was able to find the end zone. However, it took them two plays to get back on the board again and that is just ridiculous. This game is going to be a shootout and they have sent a blitz in our direction, but we're going to bomb them deep where it was just underthrown. So it's going to take us a little bit longer to reach the end zone, but Brian Hampton just did making it 14 all. Getting a stop in this one is going to be a big deal and we just got cooked on the right side of the field. Evans the third is a very fast receiver and I should have had safety help over top. They've taken our deep playability right out of our playbook and we are struggling to keep up, but Denzel Boston is going to catch this football. We just need one block and this shootout is going to get crazy. I'm going for the head top catch here, but Quentin Moore couldn't hold on to the ball and that was a risky throw to make, but it should have paid off and I'm not really seeing anything here where they're going to go ahead and get the sack on us. We're about to be held to a field goal, especially since nobody can block. And I'm not even sure if our freshman kicker can hit from this far out where that's well short. We would get them to a fourth and one though, where their kicker is going to try to do the same thing. And it's safe to say theirs is a bit better. I want to take the top off of their defense, but we have to have enough time to do so. And their corner just kept up with Ryan perfectly. So it would take us a little bit longer to get down the field, but we have been working it on the Bulldogs and that would have been a touchdown. I really don't want to take the field goal. So we are going to go for it, but they're going to pick us off. They read that hitch like a book, unfortunately. And at least we've gotten them to a third and 10 where we can be all over that screen. And that's going to give us some time to get points before the half where I'm just going to try and roll out to make a play here. I want to go for the deep shot, but it's going to lead to us turning the ball over because it did not go where it was supposed to. And I cannot believe how bad we're losing to Georgia right now. It looks like we're going to have one more season to potentially win a championship because our odds in this are not looking good anymore. And this is one of my favorite plays to mix in because it normally gets somebody open, but they're all over everything. I don't understand why they're pressing us with this much time left in the half, but I think their cornerbacks can stick with our receivers pretty well, except Ryan Artis is going to finally get free. And we have been waiting for this moment, but we have to take advantage of it here in the third quarter and our deep post is going to be caught by Williams. It wasn't really on target, but he was still able to reel it in. And I think they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, so we should cook that all day. The issue we keep running into though is getting them off of the field because their offense has been dominant. And when I say they can only get a field goal out of this drive, I mean it, but they're gonna score a touchdown. We know that time is gonna be of the essence here in the fourth quarter, and I might as well just throw a laser over the middle to Quentin Moore because we've gotten back on the board and on this third and five, we're all over the halfback screen. They keep testing us with deep shots as well by pressing our wide receivers. So we are going to take them if they're gonna give it to us. And that's just a bad throw. It's frustrating, but at the same time, it's a lot more fun to do that than run the football like this. And I'm probably getting so excited by it because I haven't been able to do any of that in the Grand Rapids series recently on the channel. But we need to make sure that we finish this drive off and I had a route that I thought would get open, but it didn't. So Davis is just escaping the pocket and can he get the blocks that he needs? That's a fumble. Oh my gosh, that was close. I am not playing this very smart. We just need one of our players to beat the man-to-man -man coverage, but they didn't and last second they did. So maybe we'll keep it on the ground just to get the first and that worked to Miller. This one has gone much differently than our game versus Baylor, but all of a sudden we're back in the lead on Georgia and it's time for our defense to step up, but they're going with four verticals and I don't know if we're going to get the interception here. It's a 50-50 ball. Johnson comes down with it and he's going to break that tackle. Oh my gosh, we could actually beat the Bulldogs. That's awesome. When we went down 31 to 14, I was already getting prepared for season four, but now we're like one first down away from ending it and Brian Hampton's going to find the open space on that side of the field. It's crazy, but Washington's going back to the national championship and it's so nice to see all of the guys celebrating again, but we still want to win it all and that game will be versus one of these two teams. With 50 seconds left, Nico is led Tennessee down the field and I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce his last name at some point, but he takes the sack. So if 12C 
seeded Tennessee can't pick this up, they're going to fall short to Texas A&M. And what are they even doing on this play? It's going to be taken all the way back for a pick six. So we're going to have to face off against the Aggies. And this right here is our best chance to win it all. But we're both 95 overall teams. So I highly doubt that it's going to be easy. And they are guarding almost everything on us. The goal with this third down play is to have an automatic rollout on it and then take this corner out, which ended up getting naked open. And thankfully, Rashid Williams was able to reel it in. Then our defense forced a fumble on the kickoff. So we have a chance to go up 14 to 0 early on Texas A&M and I could not have asked for a better start. Now we just have to hold it down on this third and three where it seemed like they're going with four verticals but we were not able to press them well enough. That is going to go to the house. They have responded back. I should have known better than to take our deep help away from that side of the field but at least we got some good blocks on this one so we're going to have enough time to almost get picked and why was that throw so short? We had a receiver that was streaking wide open and this is going over to Ryan Artis but we've had some trouble keeping the drive alive and on third and six they sent in a blitz which means we got to get rid of it. This would be a massive fourth down conversion, but I like to see that man-to-man -man coverage over there. And if they would have gone with zone, I'm not sure we would have had anything, but I'll definitely take it. Now we're going to force it into this window. So you all have seen us continue to work it down the field. And on second and goal, I feel like it's time to make a tight read, but I didn't want to fit it into that window. So I'm going to scramble instead for the touchdown. I have to say our defense has been pretty disappointing as they're going to get this third down and they'll probably score to start the second quarter, but it would be nice if we could hold them to just a field goal. And on third down, they've gone with the run where they get in. I ran commit, but nobody came close to getting to the ball. So our defense has left us disappointed again, but we have plenty of time back here in the pocket and that's going to lead to a broken play that's going to get us to about midfield. I've been running around a lot, but the more that I sit in the pocket, the more I realize that we had a really good line and it's just relying on our defense to get a third down stop, which they can't seem to do at all. What's scary is it's a super tight one and I've been playing my best. So if we make any mistakes, they could take a lead and we have yet to try a deep shot to Ryan Artis, but I want to go for it on this play where he was able to run by their defense to the 20 yard line. I don't know why sometimes he gets great animations after the catch and other times he doesn't, but those speed boosts are the ones that make plays go super well. And I should have just scrambled from the start. I got greedy and wanted to thread a needle to the end zone, but it's all going to work out. We have the ball with about a minute left in the half. And now we can make sure that this is the final drive where they're not sticking with the corner route. Let's just say from that point forward, we're going to continue to dominate offensively. And it's taken our defense a while, but they seem to finally have a chance at getting stops on Texas A&M like right here where we make the tackle. The Aggies gave it their all, but in the end, they were not able to keep up with the Huskies, and we have won it all with them in year three. To be honest, I feel like this could happen realistically, assuming Alabama doesn't snag Kalen DeBoer from Washington, and I also have to mention the challenges list, where I was able to complete all six of these. As for the NFL talent on this roster, there was obviously a lot of it, but guys like Demarcus Davis wanted to come back for one more year, and that wraps up this rebuild, but if you enjoyed this one, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this playlist of all of them.